Hello, everyone. Welcome. I don't usually get to come out from behind the percussion and talk to everyone at Rubik Shows, but tonight I'm going to be your host for the evening, I suppose. Um, my name is Kaylee Melville. I'm one of the co-directors of Rubik's and also the percussionist, as you've probably already gathered. Uh, I'd really like to thank you all for coming out tonight to, to our show and um, just say what a pleasure it is to be back at the Recital Centre after a long time away. Uh, we'd like to acknowledge that we are gathered tonight on the lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation and to pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. So tonight's program is in many ways a reflection on some of the experiences and emotions that we all went through in the last 12 months. And we have two world premieres from composers um, tonight who have really reflected on that in quite different ways and from opposite sides of the world. So the piece you just heard was from Bianca Gannon and reflecting on the bushfire season that kicked off our 2020. And right at the end of the concert tonight, we'll hear another piece from Akari Kumura, who is an American composer, who, uh, whose piece is quite a deep meditation on connection with nature and the importance that that kind of held for a lot of us uh, last year and kind of grounding ourselves. Uh, introducing tonight's band quickly. So we have Jacob Abella on piano, Kim Tan on flutes, Natasha Fernside on clarinets, and Lucy Price on cello. Before we jump into the next piece, I did want to talk a little bit more about Bianca's work because it re is really, really special to us. Um, Bianca was the winner of our 2019 Pythia Prize, which is a commissioning program that we run at Rubik's. Um, and the work was called Our House is on Fire. And Bianca wrote a beautiful program note that I'd really like to share with you briefly that I think really captures what this piece is about. So she wrote, as I drove cautiously through hours of scorched and burning national forest following the 2019-2020 Australian bushfire crisis, I contemplated climate change and respect for our home. Beyond this ground zero, I could hear further trees falling. I could almost hear the distant memories of logging trains, foghorns, gas bottle explosions, sirens, and ancestral cries, cries which led me on a research journey. Globally, various indigenous fire management practices share some striking similarities, including, to my surprise, my native island. I learned particularly from the wealth of knowledge of First Nations Australians that these ancient tried and tested practices have a basis in science and logic, as well as spirituality. If only we listened. Um, Bianca's done an incredible amount of research into this piece, and it became apparent in the last couple of months that the kind of 10-minute original constraints of the Pythia Prize work we thought we were making we're just going to be way too small. So we're now imagining that this is going to be a much bigger work, and we're really looking forward to continuing this journey with Bianca. So what you heard tonight will probably be the first movement of something bigger to come. Next up tonight, we've got a piece from Holly Harrison uh, called Frog Stomp. I won't say too much about this one, because it's best if you discover for yourself what it's all about. But there are a couple of surprises in that drum kit setup, so enjoy. <laughs>
So what you can't see hidden away behind that drum kit is a little squeaky toy that steps in for the bass drum quite a bit. And there's a bit of a story behind this one. So the piece is called Frog Stomp because back when Holly first wrote it, she had this really amazing squeaky frog and Holly herself is a really great drummer. So squeaky frog went into the drum kit setup. And we were like, yep, great, we're gonna play it, Holly. We're gonna find the best squeaky frog we can. And it turns out that squeaky frogs are not very in fashion at the moment. We had a really hard time finding one. So we, we managed to order one on the internet and he turned up and he was about this big, which is not gonna quite cut it in that piece. So we went on a bit of a journey then trying to figure out what our alternative squeak sound would be. And Kim, our flutist um, this evening, her dog Copper unknowingly donated a few contenders to our drum kit setup. We had a squeaky sloth for a little while. Um, it was pretty upsetting stepping on his cute little face in rehearsal. And what we actually wound up on in the end was we've got a very conveniently flat squeaky pig. <laughs> so, but pig stomp didn't have quite the same ring to it, so we stuck with frog stomp. Um, next up tonight, we have a piece from a composer, Nicole Lise, whose work we've played a little bit before in Rubik's. Uh, actually, our last show here before our big hiatus, we played a beautiful work of hers called Sculptress, which was all about kind of pioneers of, um, female pioneers of electronics and electronic music. And tonight is a little bit of a different one. Tonight is a bit of a deep dive tribute into the work of Prince. So the whole piece um, we're about to play, Softcore, is kind of a massive deconstruction of the song Kiss. 
and it has a whole bunch of R&B tropes in there. You'll see Jacob claps his hands. We both sing backup vocals at some point. There's a whole bunch of wind chimes everywhere. It's a, it's a very good time. We also have some really... Um, some little instruments in this one that really pack a punch. We've got a couple of little pocket synthesizers called stylophones, which are only about yay big, but you'll hear them right at the end of the piece, and they are loud when you run them through this system. So um, this one's been on our repertoire wish list for quite a while, and we're really excited to play this one for you. So this is softcore.
I said there's something, uh, something about the effect that you made a couple of demonstrations in records when you were a teenager. You, you're barely more than that now, are you? Nineteen. Nineteen. Well, you got another year to go before you graduate. How many years ago did you did you make these demos and then uh, have offers on them? And why would you turn it down? Um, they wouldn't let me produce myself. You were 15 at the time. Yeah. Would they think you didn't know what you were doing? have kind of raced through it. It feels like time has just flown and we're already at the last piece on tonight's program. So we have a few thank yous we'd really like to share before we get to that last piece. Um, firstly, to the MRC for having us here tonight. It's always such an absolute joy to play in this beautiful space and the staff are always just so, just exceptional. So thank you so much for having us again. 
Um, to Bianca and Akari for their new works. They're both just so special and we're really grateful that, um, for the trust that these composers have put in us to bring their works to life. Uh, to Speak Percussion, who have lent us a lot of instruments for tonight. You can see we've got a lot of gear. It doesn't all belong in my house. Um, so a big thank you to them. Uh, to Hamish Upton, who you can see madly running around managing the stage um, moves of the percussion tonight, a big thank you. Um, to all of the donors to the Pythia Prize who contributed to making Bianca's piece happen, just a huge, huge thank you. The Pythia is such a community effort and we're so grateful for all of the love and support we feel around that commissioning project from the community. So a big thank you to everyone for that. And finally, to all of you for joining us tonight. It is so exciting to play in a room for people, with people again. And um, we hope you can feel the love radiating from the stage as well. Um, our final piece tonight is from Japanese-American composer Akari Kimura. And Akari is one of the current winners of the Booman Fellowship, which is a composer mentoring and commissioning program run by our friends Kinds of Kings in New York. Um, so the piece, Akari sent a little program note about this one as well, which I'll read for you. This piece was written with reverence for the native inhabitants and environments among our lives. No matter where we are on the earth, we mutually reside within nature's vicinity, yet we sometimes overlook such a connection to the flora and fauna and become unmindful of experiencing the beauty that quietly grows, blooms, and withers. This piece, in the language of the bloom, revolves around the idea of fostering and celebrating a harmonious relationship with nature. Prior to playing the piece, each performer has been invited to seek a wildflower and to be in dialogue with it by observing and meditating with its presence. And Jacob's going to come around very quickly now and show you some of the beautiful flowers we've made for this piece, dried flowers, which now serve as our graphic score. So you can see we've been busy making beautiful flowers. <laughs> So our job through the piece is to interpret the flowers with our sounds and we kind of move through from the stem to the heart of the flower and then to the seeds emanating out into the world and creating new life. Uh, Bianca says, sorry, Akari says, through mu musical improvisation, the performers imagine ways to embody individual collected plants. The performance engages in the energies of the collective plants through sonic expression of the color, shape, aura and other imaginative qualities. This piece has been such a salve for the soul for us. Um, I don't know about all of you, but it feels like life went from zero to 100 really fast this year. And so this piece is very much about grounding and reconnecting with um, the roots of the plants, but also our own roots, kind of feeling centered and grounded and reconnected with the earth. And we've been starting this piece in, in the rehearsals with just a moment of grounding silence, which we will do again tonight. And we'd really invite you to share in that moment with us and just to feel that lovely energy in the room. Thank you all for coming, and this is In the Language of the Bloom.